Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. A man sentenced today for his role in a road rage incident last year, one that didn't involve just anyone but a district court judge. It tops our news at 5. This all happened on the Southfield Freeway going back to last December. An irate driver used his vehicle as a weapon against the judge from Oakwood Boulevard to Six Mile Road. Judge Kenneth King telling Local 4 at the time he thought he might have to use his own gun to defend himself. Sean Lay has been on this story every step of the way and joins us now with this latest chapter. Sean. Devin, and Judge King is telling me this could happen to anyone. He told the court that today it could happen to anyone. A guy was coming into his lane. He's trying to get on the Southfield Freeway. The judge simply okay. gave one simple honk, and that kicked off miles of a road rage nightmare. Take a look. I blew my horn. All I did was blow my horn. In the light suit on the right side of your screen is 36th District Court Judge Kenneth King doing something he tells me he's never done before. What came after that? was total nonsense. This afternoon, he was in a circuit court courtroom giving a victim impact statement at the sentencing of Jamal Colbert, who pled guilty to felonious assault for making the judge his target of road rage back in December for miles up the Southfield Freeway after the judge says Colbert almost hit him with his car. It was unbelievable. As I got onto the freeway, that car followed me onto the freeway, almost ran me into the wall, continued to try to veer their car into me, as I proceeded north on Southfield Freeway for approximately nine miles being tormented. Judge King describing to the court how not only his life was put in danger, but the lives of drivers around him. The judge was armed and fully believed Colbert and his passenger were armed. If I had seen that, then it could, any number of scenarios could have played out. I could have shot him, they could have shot me, I could have shot an innocent bystander, they could have shot an innocent bystander. I could have, in trying to get away from them, gotten into a car accident. All right, back here live. Colbert now facing two judges today. The victim here, Judge Kenneth King, who was addressed in the court, and Judge Wanda Evans. It was her courtroom. She gave Colbert three days in jail, essentially, anger management and some other punishments, guys. But again, facing two judges in court, and Judge King says, you've got to be careful out there. Judge Wanda Evans said the same thing. These things should not happen. Everyone's got to keep their cool. Back to you. Yeah, you got it. All right, Sean. All right, protests continue on college campuses across the country and here in Michigan. The encampment at U of M is still up despite much of the student body leaving campus for the summer. Pamela Osborne is live from campus today and uh, Pamela concerns are now growing over upcoming graduation ceremonies. Yeah, you can see we're here on the center of campus where demonstrators are camped out at this point. But as you said, the university already making plans ahead of Saturday's commencement at the big house in the event that any of these protesters make their way there, as some did during an honor ceremony last month. It's quiet on UM's campus, even in the Diag, where a large encampment of demonstrators remain. We don't know. We're, we're here. We're here for as long as it takes. We're here for until divestment demands are taken seriously and met. Junior Alifa Chowdhury is speaking on behalf of those protesting. We're going to be here. We're going to keep going. We're going to continue protesting. As it does in the heart of campus, the university is making plans ahead of Saturday's commencement. In light of the protest, a university spokeswoman said commencement ceremonies have been the site of free expression and peaceful protest for decades and will likely continue to be. The university's goal is to limit significant disruptions, ensure safety, and support a successful event worthy of the achievements of the university's extraordinary graduates. We heard that included asking staff members to volunteer during the ceremony to disrupt any potential protests. Their response, while staff members with experience in responding to event disruptions will lead efforts at commencement events, volunteers have also received training on how to respectfully address disruptions in the audience and mitigate disruptive behavior. Demonstrators feel that stance diminishes their rights. I think it says a lot about where the university stands with these protests. They say they're all for free speech, but then they're trying to regulate how we're going about that. 
As for the commencement, banners and flags are going to be prohibited. Tickets are going to be required, and there will be security screenings. We're told that anybody who causes a disruption, um, some of it will be, uh, there will be a warning, I should say, given at that first attempt of a disruption. And if it gets to the point where it's disruptive to the ceremony, there will be de-escalation de techniques that are in place to deal with that. Reporting live in Ann Arbor, I'm Pamela Osborne, Local 4. Yeah, okay, Pamela. Thank you. Boy, what a crowd we've had today helping us go for it by making comfort blankets for families whose relatives are donating organs. The Michigan Donor Family Council started making the blankets back in 2010, and the need for them is huge, and so was today's turnout. Paula Tutman has been at the Henry Ford Centennial Library in Dearborn all day. Paula, what a, what a great feeling to walk in there today and see all of those people who came out to, jo to help us out. Mammoth, Mammoth, I know both of you were here and it is official. This event has officially broken all records. Gift of Life Michigan says that they have never had a single blanket making event that is this large. Joel, I just want you to come over here for a quick second because you see this right here. I don't know how they have any more flannel left in the state of Michigan. It all absolutely has to be here. I'm going to tell you how many blankets we've made thus far in just a few moments. But first, I want to introduce you to some of the folks who've been here. They're coming from everywhere. At 88 years young, Sandy Olenek is the mother of all blanket makers. She's been cutting for over 12 years and she cuts over a thousand blankets a year. She makes them for a variety of organizations, but when she saw that we were looking for volunteers for the comfort blanket making event for Gift of Life Michigan, she knew she had a few more to make. Here I hear that they take them to hospitals when they do the surgery. I'm hearing all the good things that, that they're doing for these blankets, and that's my job. If they take that away from me, I'm a goner. That means to date she has cut and tied more than 12,000 blankets for various events and organizations. I can't even put it in words, Paula. It's so powerful. In fact, our, our president just just left. She was here. She made her rounds, talked to everybody at the table, and just said how powerful and wonderful and of experience it is. Hearing people who have donor fam or donor families that are here, people who family's been on the waiting list. It's just, it's a great experience. There is no way to quantify how many hearts will be comforted or how many lives will actually be saved because of this one event. But we know that both have happened and will happen in abundance. In fact, I know somebody who signed up to become a donor today and coming here, being a part of it, she was like, I, there's so much stuff she didn't know. And thanks to your stories and being here and being a part of this event, she's now on the Michigan Organ Donor Registry list. And so, you know, we have 25, over 2,500 people waiting and you never know who by joining who you might say. Yeah, and, and let me tell you this. We also know that this is what we do know. 280 blankets made thus far and the event is not over and I said how long would it have taken you otherwise to make these blankets and and basically they ran out of fingers and toes so they weren't able to count and actually quantify how long it would have taken to get this much done but oh my gosh our audience showing up amazing also amazing stay with me 545 we're going to talk about Justin Schilling you know who yes, that is yes a foundation set up in his name oh I'm getting a little emotional. A foundation set up in his name, this young man who lost his life is giving so much more and it even goes beyond organ donation. So I hope you will stay with me then. We have more important stories yeah. to tell. We, do. we sure do. It's what a wonderful. I was thinking today about Fred Rod, Mr. Rogers, uh -huh. when he said, "When things, you know, when things happen, look for the helpers. Right. Look at all the helpers today." It never ceases to amaze me how giving our viewers uh, yeah, are, and yeah. they showed that today. It was great to it see all so the So was it? Just there. warmed yeah. our hearts. Uh, technology continues to push the boundaries of organ transplantation, allowing doctors to save lives in previously unheard of situations. Yeah, and as we successfully close out this National Donate Life Month, Dr. Frank McGeorge is also at our Comfort Blanket event, and he joins us live now to explain how one new device is extending the possibilities in specifically liver transplantation, Doc. 
Well, yeah, Kim and Devin. So, you know, once a surgeon removes an organ from a donor's body, a countdown clock of sorts begins to tick because without a steady supply of oxygen and nutrients, the cells in that organ begin to undergo damage. So that countdown clock limits how far an organ can be transplanted and its overall health. Well, now that countdown clock is being slowed down. Many have seen the uh, ice coolers that we use to uh, store organs between the donor and the recipient and get back to the transplant center. We take the organs off of ice and, you know, and do the transplant. But ice storage is, is not the healthiest way of, of sustaining a, an organ that's going to be transplanted. And so the new um, machine perfusion technologies that we have uh, keep an organ so much alive between the donor and the recipient. Dr. David Reich says by using the devices that some refer to as liver in a box, they're able to pump oxygenated blood and nutrient solutions through a donor's liver outside the body. That, in turn, can help improve the quality of the organ. It also gives surgeons a better chance to examine the liver and determine if it's healthy enough to be transplanted, or they can further rejuvenate the liver. Research shows perfusion has helped reduce the risk for complications as well. We have better results when we use perfusion. Patients go home from the hospital sooner. They have fewer complications. They have better, uh, better safety in the operating room during the transplants and then during their post-operative uh, and longer-term course. So another benefit to systems like this is that if the surgery to remove the recipient's organ is lengthy or complex, there isn't any worry about the donated liver going bad, so to speak. Systems like this have been used to support a liver out of the body for as long as 24 hours. Dr. Rick Jones, I know in, in the past we've talked about and we've done stories about other organs being kept alive outside of the body. How similar are these systems? Well, you know, Kim, we've talked about so-called heart in a box and lung in a box, for example. They have similarities, but they are also specifically tailored to the individual organs. For example, part of the lung system involves artificially breathing into the lungs, and part of the heart system involves maintaining its electrical conduction. So while the basics of perfusing them like they are alive is similar, maintaining the function is actually dependent yeah. on yeah. the individual Makes organs. Sense. Yeah, Back it's to really you. great. Yeah, yeah. It is. Okay, Dr. McGeorge, thank you. Blank is the centerpiece today, but uh, people who have decided to become organ donors and sign up for that, so much the better. Really great.